Hey, what's up everyone? James here, and today I bring you the end of Duke, where he will come face to face with his nemesis, Destro, and where the rise of G.I. Joe begins. The other thing we will cover in this video is the Energon Universe special story that takes place after the end of Duke, so make sure you stick around to the end of the video. With that being said, let's get into it. So this picks up where we last left off with Rock and Roll and Clutch battling Major Blood's Bloodhounds and the Baroness having a gun to the head of Duke, threatening to take him out and claim the bounty on his head. She tells him he had a chance to leave, but Duke points out that Major Blood and his Bloodhounds are going scorched earth. They plan on leaving no survivors. He says, make a call, help me or not. Otherwise, stop wasting my time and pull the damn trigger. The Baroness likes his response and ends up agreeing to help. Stalker shows up with a knife to her throat, so if it went the other way, Stalker would have showed up and taken her out. Duke assures him that she's with them. The group decides they can't travel up the pit since the rest of the Bloodhound forces are waiting for them, so their only option is to travel further down. The team discovers a hangar full of old military and experimental vehicles decommissioned. Duke and Clutch come up with a crazy plan. Meanwhile above the pit, Major Blood is shockingly still alive, which, let's be honest, this guy should be dead or at the very least unconscious. He literally took a shot to the back of the head. He orders his bloodhounds to bomb the pit to the ground and then go looking for survivors. And if the Baroness is still alive, leave her to him. However, Duke's team suddenly comes storming out of the pit, driving an APC and some classic Joe vehicles, such as the Mobat, the Joe's original tank, and their original jet, the Sky Striker. They run down the Bloodhounds, destroying some of their vehicles and causing them to panic and run. Major Blood orders them to fire back, but he gets run over by the APC. Blood cannot catch a break, like the dude should be so dead even after that. As the Bloodhounds retreat, the Baroness steals one of their gyrocopters, also called Fangs. At the same time, Duke decides to leave and head to the location Dr. Burkhardt's Lojack showed him in Clutch. Clutch warns him though that he may not get the answers he wants and suggests taking Stalker and Rock and Roll's advice and turning himself in to Colonel Hawk. But Duke refuses, saying he needs to see this through to the end. Later, we go to Destro, overseeing the construction of his new His Tank at his secret Mars facility in the Rocky Mountains. One of his men informs him that their power cores aren't enough to power the His Tank. This right here is setting up one of the main reasons why he and Cobra Commander end up working together. And we'll see that in the conclusion of Cobra Commander. That's coming soon, I promise you. Mercer informs him of Major Blood's failure and that Duke is on the run again. Knowing Duke will be heading to their location, Destro tells Mercer to have Scrap Iron test his latest creation on him. As Duke approaches the facility, its secret entrance opens up, where Scrap Iron appears. Now a little tidbit about Scrap Iron, he is Destro's experimental weapons designer who seeks to create the perfect weapon because he admires perfection above all else. Anything he considers imperfect, he believes should be destroyed. He fires a missile from his anti-armor drone. Duke does his best to outmaneuver the missiles, but they still end up on his tail and hit the Sky Striker causing it to crash. When Scrap Iron searches for Duke's remains, he finds nothing. Duke managed to bail out of the Sky Striker before it crashed. Scrap Iron gets pissed here, he removes his helm, and we see his scarred face. So for a dude that admires perfection above all else, his face is definitely not perfect. Duke climbs up the mountain into the facility and discovers more weapons, vehicles, and a massive battery inside. As he's like searching through the facility, he knows Mars is watching him, so he yells saying he knows they built the flying robot that killed Frosting, and that he won't stop until he kills it. Out of nowhere, a mechanical clawed arm grasps his neck. Duke comes face to face with one of Mars' deadliest creations, the Battle Android Trooper. The android throws him into a crate, who then approaches Duke is the Lord of War himself, my boy, Destro. He says, it's called a Battle Android Trooper, Bat for sure. They never complain or surrender. They're the future. You have been a thorn in my side long enough. I thought it was time we met face to face, Conrad Hauser. Now, surprisingly, 
he doesn't want Duke dead. Instead, he offers him a deal. He explains that the only winner in all wars are the weapons and those who control them. The Destro family has controlled those weapons for centuries. He wants people like Duke who have been burned by the system and betrayed by their country. Now to no surprise Duke refuses because he doesn't want to work for the guy whose flying robot killed his friend. Destro reveals he has no idea what he's talking about and tells Duke that isn't his creation. However, Destro tries to use it to manipulate Duke, saying that the US government created it and lied to him. He promises Duke he can give him all the answers to his questions. Now Duke is not stupid. He acts like he's going to take Destro's offer until he takes his hand and headbutts him. Which honestly hurts him more than Destro because the guy is wearing a steel mask. However, Duke shakes it off and tells Destro he doesn't believe him. He mentions that his whole speech even sounded rehearsed. Destro responds by reactivating the bat and having it continue to beat down Duke. As he leaves, Mercer informs him that Duke might have been followed since his tracker pinged again. Destro orders Scrap Iron to destroy the facility. That way, no evidence they were ever there could be discovered. Returning to Duke in the bat's fight, Duke bashes it in the head with a rifle and then climbs on its back and rips out its head along with its spinal column. He literally pulls a Sub-Zero from Mortal Kombat. He tackles it as it wildly fires its flamethrower everywhere. Duke bashes the android's body with its own head and he is filled with every bit of anger and rage he can muster, all fueled by the memory of the day Starscream killed Frosting. He finally puts it down for the count and as Duke collapses from exhaustion, Scrap Iron triggers his explosives and destroys the facility. Sometime later, the news reports that Duke is dead, that his body was discovered by some hikers in the mountains who were investigating fireworks. They also report that he was framed for Dr. Burkhardt's murder and that forced him to go on the run, that the man who actually committed her murder was Major Blood, who is still at large. Of course, Duke being dead isn't true at all because we then go to a hospital where we see he is still alive. He wakes up to Colonel Hawk and CoverGirl greeting him. Hawk explains to Duke that he withheld the truth to protect him because Destro is secretly working with multiple people in the US government. However, because of his actions, they know more about Destro and Mars than ever before. And he asks Duke to join him. Duke responds, why should he trust him? Especially when he didn't trust him with what he secretly knew this entire time. All Hawk says is, let's go for a ride. Hawk takes Duke to the pit as it is being repaired and restored. He tells Duke that this will be their new base of operations. And when Duke sees Clutch here, Hawk reveals he would like him to lead and build a highly trained team, one that can handle the threats that are coming. Duke initially refuses until Hawk mentions there's more than just one robot. He shows Duke footage of Optimus Prime. Hawk says this one turns into a truck. Destro might have not built them, but someone did. We need to know what they are and how to stop them. What do you say, Duke? Duke replies, we destroy them all. G.I. Joe officially rises in the Energon universe and their primary goal will be to hunt down all the Transformers. Now from here we will cover the Energon Universe special short story that takes place after Duke, where we see Duke informing Colonel Hawk that the Baroness is the next member of G.I. Joe he wants to recruit. However, Hawk thinks he's crazy for considering her for G.I. Joe, mainly because she's a well-known criminal spy and assassin with many enemies. Duke argues that those skills make her a valuable asset because she looks and thinks outside the box. They need her willingness to get her hands dirty for what's to come. Meanwhile, we see the Baroness still on the run, somewhere around the world right now, walking down a city street. Suddenly, she gets ambushed by two people clad in green and black armor using some advanced tech. We will find out the identities of these two mysterious figures by the end of this video, and it's wild. The Baroness is able to hold her own against them, but she soon realizes this isn't a fight she's going to win. So she creates an opening to escape, and at that moment, Duke appears riding a motorcycle offering to help her escape. Later aboard a plane, the Baroness tells Duke she is disappointed he returned to the US military after they burned him. Duke explains he returned because the coming war is bigger than all of them and he needs all the resources he can get. 
He offers her a position within G.I. Joe because they need someone who will question authority and keep the team honest and on edge. He says, you in or would you like to spend the rest of your days behind bars or on the run? The Baroness, wearing her own G.I. Joe uniform, decorated with a star, responds, well, when you put it like that, yo, Joe. The Baroness becomes a member of G.I. Joe. Skybound is really shaking up the Energon universe by making the Baroness a Joe member and not a Cobra member as she's always been depicted. But you never know, maybe at some point she thinks Cobra is where she wants to be. Anyways, at the end of the story we go to Hawk, maybe at some secret location or on a hidden level within the pit. What we see next will show us everything coming to the Energon universe. Hawk has various files on his desk of current and future Joe members like Scarlet, and a file on Destro with a photo of the mass device. Remember, we saw a schematic of it in Dr. Burkhardt's office in the first Duke issue. For those of you who don't know, the mass device is a matter transference device. In simple terms, it's a machine that teleports solid objects from one place to another. It first appeared in the miniseries that launched the G.I. Joe series. Dr. Laszlo Vandermeer developed the technology behind the device. We'll talk more about him in the Cobra Commander miniseries. Other files we also see here are one of the Dreadnoughts with a photo of their headquarters being burned down, and another with the Autobot logo. We also see a shot of a monitor showing the Crimson Twins, Tomax and Zaymont. Now the two people who attack the Baroness are revealed to be Lady J and Flint who approach him. They were following his orders. Hawk tells them that they went easy on her but Flint reminds him his orders to them was to bring her in alive. Lady J chimes in, saying Duke showing up and helping her escape wasn't a part of the plan. However, Hawk points out it still worked out in their favor, because she ended up on their side and now has a bond with Duke. Flint asks why the deception. Hawk answers, Duke and I have had some trust issues recently, and he must not know that we're making more than one team. This is kind of major. Hawk is yet again withholding such a big secret from Duke, which is to create a secret team within G.I. Joe. Now what is the goal of this team? We don't know, but Hawk is looking to recruit dangerous and skilled people regardless of their criminal background. Well that's the end of Duke, be on the lookout for the end of Cobra Commander, and the beginning of the Destro and Scarlet miniseries coming to the channel. Make sure you subscribe, join the Beyonders, and check out the Energon Universe playlist to catch up on every series we have on there. Other than that, have an awesome day, and always remember, every day, to go beyond.